What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the most important things you need to know to create plans and layout from your SketchUp models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first things first, this is just some of the stuff that you would learn inside of the SketchUp Essentials course. That's gonna be my in-depth course teaching how to use SketchUp. We're currently in the middle of our Black Friday sale, meaning that you can get either 50% off of your monthly membership, or you can save even more by going with the annual membership to the course. So that course is gonna contain very in-depth tutorials teaching you how to create models in SketchUp, how to take them to layout in order to create plans, and also give you access to other tools like our live calls where we can get on calls and you can ask questions in our community forum as well. So if you are looking for a better way to learn SketchUp, make sure you check out my course. Um, as a part of this sale, you do also get access to my complete SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, um, which is very in-depth on creating plans in layout, as well as my complete Twin Motion Essentials course, which is going to teach you how to create 3D renderings. So if you are interested in that, make sure you check Check out the course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. All right, so as the example model, we're going to use this butterfly cabin small variant number one from Mike Brestel if you want to download that and follow along. But first off, one of the things you need to understand is your camera, or more specifically your scene, is going to be very important for what you can create in layout. So remember that what layout does is it basically creates a viewport into your SketchUp model from layout that you can use in order to create your plans. So say that we wanted to create a floor plan from this model and send it to layout. What we would do is we wouldn't create that in layout, we would create the scene here. So I would add a section cut across my building like this, and you can kind of move that wherever you want it to go, but we'll just call this floor plan view one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a top down view and save it. So I'm gonna click into top down mode. I'm going to turn off parallel projection and I'm going to set my camera up so that I can see this. Now there's a bunch of section planes in here. What we wanna do is we wanna go into our um, styles over here in our tray and we wanna to toggle off section planes in our style. Now what we can do is we can right click and we can add a scene and I'm gonna go ahead and call this floor plan. Right here, well now we've created a scene that we can go back to inside of SketchUp, but we can also send this over to Layout. Now, you can either use the file send to layout button in order to do this, or you can manually add a viewport over in layout. I'm just gonna do the send to layout. Um, it's gonna ask me to save this, but then once I've done that, this is going to send this over to layout. It's gonna ask me to pick a plan type. So I'm just gonna go with this A4 landscape right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring this viewport into layout. And so you can set your scale using the SketchUp model options over here on the right hand side. So in this case, for example, I probably want this scale to be closer to maybe an eighth of an inch right here, but you can see how my camera view is going to set the way that this looks over in layout. So say for example, that I was to make an adjustment, right? So say I was to zoom out and then adjust this. So I was to update it, save my model, jump back into layout. Notice how if I update my model reference, this camera view is going to change as well. So whatever you set up in your scene is going to set what you see in layout. So one thing that I recommend is get your camera view set up the way that you want it. So in this case, right, maybe I want my camera view to be right here, but I'm going to update it. But then you can work off of this for other views. And so that's another thing I want you to understand is when you set up your scenes, the styles that you set up in your scenes is going to drive the way that this looks in layout. So for example, say that you wanted more of a black and white floor plan. Well, what I would do is I would start by going into my floor plan camera view right here so that my camera's in the correct location. Then I'm going to add a new scene and I'm gonna call this floor plan BW for black and white. Now, what we want is we wanna go into our styles over here and you can either create your own style or I'm going to pick the hidden line style from my default styles. Now, when I do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to set this up where I'm no longer seeing the materials. Everything is just black and white. 
Well, we can actually go into this and make changes. So for example, I don't want these section fills to show up in here. So I'm gonna to toggle those off. I'm also going to adjust the section line width, which is going to adjust how thick that line is. I'm gonna do a control T to deselect this, but notice how now what I've got is I've got a floor plan in here that, um, that more looks like a floor plan. I don't know what the best way to say that is, but it's black and white rather than color. Well, now what I can do is I'm just gonna save my model. Well, then if I jump over into layout, I can actually update this model reference, right? So I'm just telling it to go get the most up-to-date version of this. Well, I can right click and go into my scenes and notice how that save scene is gonna show up as an option so I can actually pick this in here. So you're going to drive the way that these models look in layout using your scenes in SketchUp. Okay, so next thing that's going to be really important is you also wanna drive the visibility of what's gonna be seen in your scenes over in SketchUp as well. And so for example, one of the things that's gonna be really important is say I wanted to toggle this ground off. Well, what you need to do is you need to model out things in your model and it's a good idea to have a working view like this one. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna set up your model so that things are tagged so that you can easily toggle them on and off. So in this case, this model has a trees layer that I can toggle on and off, but a lot of these trees aren't actually in or on that layer. So it is important that as you kind of model and go that you're putting things like these trees on layers. Now, one thing that can be really helpful is instead of putting every single tree on a layer, what you could do instead is you could put those all in a group and you could put the group on a layer or on a tag. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna hold the control key to go into add mode and I'm going to click and drag across these different trees like this. I'm gonna jump into a top-down view really quick in order to pick up some more of these. But instead of tagging each one of these trees individually, you can put them in a group. And so you can see how I've created this group in here. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna rename this trees and I wanna put this group on a tag. Well, when I do that, notice how I can tag or toggle off everything that's in that group just by toggling the trees tag on and off like this. So keeping your model organized in this way can actually be really important. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with these. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna make them a group. And in this case, I'm gonna take that group and I'm gonna call it bushes. I'm gonna create a tag called bushes. I'll tag this group, but then I'll toggle that off like this. Well, the cool thing about that is you can take these things that you've toggled off and this one I might call ground, label this ground and toggle it off. Well, you can save those visibilities in your views, right? So notice how when I go into my floor plan black and white view, those all kind of came back on. Um, you can just toggle them off. So trees, ground, bushes like this so that I can only see my building right here like this, but then I can update this scene in order to save that. I can save my model and I can jump back over into layout and I can update this model reference. Well now, those things that I turned off no longer show up in my view. I'm gonna set this to be my front elevation. So see how it's really easy to come in here and make these changes and adjustments to the way that these things look inside of SketchUp. Now, one thing you should be aware of, um, because you've probably dealt with this before, is if you look at this model, it actually doesn't look very good, right? And the reason it doesn't look very good is because we don't have a very good rendering style selected. And so within layout, there are different styles that you can set for your viewport, right? So notice if I click on this drop down right here, I've got options for rec vector, raster, and hybrid. Now vector, is specifically designed to give you smooth line work inside of SketchUp like this. So you can use this in order to kind of smooth out your lines to make everything look smooth, right? So now the line work on this model looks really good. Now where this gets tricky though, is if you were to select something like your color floor plan, your vector render style is not going to display your textures 
very well. So you can pick vector if you want to show lines and line weights. Um, notice how it does take a little while longer to actually render out. So that is a performance thing to consider. But your vector style is only going to show your line weights and colors, not textures. And so you can kind of see this if I zoom in on my floor, notice how there's no textures in here. Now the second option is raster. What raster is going to do is it renders very quickly and it'll show your textures in here as well, but your line weights aren't very good, right? They just kind of show up as like these nasty dotted edges. So um, a lot of the time they're not so good for showing these lines, but they do render quickly if you're just trying to show something quickly. And then there is also an option for hybrid. And so what hybrid is going to do is it's going to try to combine vector with raster in order to give you an image um, that has smooth lines, but also the more complex styles. Now be aware that if you set your model um, and kind of like a heavy line model like this one to, um, to hybrid, this is going to slow down your performance. So every time you make changes, this is gonna have to go back through and like re-render everything. So those are your three options. If you don't like the way your lines look, um, you can pick vector. Um, if you want something that's super fast, you can pick raster. If you want something that combines them but it's gonna be a lot slower, you can pick hybrid. All right, so once you get over into sketch or over into layout, like this, a lot of the time you're gonna to wanna to make changes and you're gonna to wanna to start stacking things together. So you're gonna to wanna to start adding annotations and other things like that. And so one of the things that I highly recommend, especially if you've set up your view, is I highly recommend that you create a layer for things like your viewports. So if you have one or more, um, you could label this like SketchUp, SketchUp viewport like this, but then you can take this object, you can put it on that layer. So you can do a move to layer and put it on SketchUp viewport. And one of the things I highly recommend is locking your viewport layer once you've got it created and it's where you want it to be. Cause it is just super easy when you're sitting here working to accidentally pick this up and move it, which can really kind of like break your whole um, set of plans. So I really recommend that once you get your viewport where you want it to be, lock the layer that you put your SketchUp viewport on so you're not accidentally moving it around. Okay, and so one other thing that I think a lot of people don't really understand because it doesn't work exactly the same way as it does in SketchUp. In layout, your layers are actually like vertically integrated in the sense that each one of these layers is kind of stacking on top of the others. So what that means is that means that the order of these layers really matters because it's going to affect what you can see. So for example, let's say that I was try to try to add some text in here and I'm just gonna use a scrapbook because these scrapbooks are already kind of like set up and ready to go. So I'm just gonna pick something off of the TB simple. Well, if I bring this in and I try to use it to name my plans, or name my sheet, notice how it's not showing up. You can't actually see it in here. You can't get to it and it's not showing up. Well, the reason why it's not showing up is because we put that on our default layer. Well, the problem is your default layer is under your SketchUp viewport layer. Now notice if I toggle that SketchUp viewport layer off, that's going to show up just fine. But if I toggle it on, it's going to block this because this is under that. So what I recommend is I recommend first off, creating layers for your different kinds of things, right? So in this case, this would be an annotation layer right here, but you're gonna want that annotation layer to be above your SketchUp viewport. Well, now if I take this layer, right click and I move it to annotation, then I toggle my viewport back on. Notice how this is now going to show up. So usually my annotation and uh, things like my dimensioning show up near the top of my list right here um, because I usually want them over my viewport so I can actually see them. So just make sure you're adding those layers and thinking about them kind of like they're, they're like stacked pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. That's kind of the way that I kind of wrap my mind around it when I first got started. But I would recommend um, if you want annotation and then maybe like measurements or dimensions like this, I would put all of your dimensions on one layer as well. Not only because um, 
That way you can affect the way that they stack. It also makes it easy for you to make changes and adjustments. So for example, say that I added all of these different dimensions in here and they don't actually have the units that I want. Right, so because I'm in America, we use Imperial. You might not totally get it, but for me, um, all of these dimensions are showing the wrong thing. Now I could come in here and select them individually, but when you have a bunch of different uh, annotations in here, that can get really frustrating. Well, if they're all on the same layer, you can actually right click and do a select entities. That'll select everything that's on the layer in your model. Well, then I could jump over here and I could set this to decimal inches or decimal feet or architectural feet. And notice how all of those are going to change and adjust very quickly because I put them all on the same layer. So by putting things on a layer and grouping them as like entities, it makes editing them really easy in the future. All right, so if you do want some more help with this workflow, make sure you check out my course. I really did try to set that up where it helps you kind of like start to finish, where you understand all of the steps for creating plans from your 3D models in SketchUp and Layout. Um, but I will link to that on this page. Remember that's on sale through middle of next week. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.